When I think of a good indie game that will entertain me for a while when I'm stuck at home with no internet service, I think of a game called Wizard of Legend. This game has a lot of replayability, and I mean a lot of replayability. Wizard of Legend boss fights feel like boss fights, with each council member being masters of their element, and you do get that impression because of how unique their moves are to each other. When you're going into a boss fight, you enter an arena that's quiet with a health crystal before the fight. And when you enter the fight, you're greeted with a council member saying the most generic thing like, It's shocking that you made it this far. And the fight commences. Every council member, along with the final boss, have different moves and even add more to what is in their arsenal, depending on what stage of the game you're on. Take this council member. Yeah, not bad. First stage, manageable. We'll look at them on the third stage. And it's not just the council members that have different moves for each stage. Take this motherfucker for example. He just does that pussy ass thwomp on the first stage. Look at that. It's shit! But on the third stage... Come here. Come on. Oh, damn. Ah! The story in this game is simple. You are taking a tour of a museum and then a magic coin teleports you to a town called Lenova. That sounds like a pretty generic story, right? Well, you are right. But the entertainment that you get more than makes up for the story that you don't get. To me, this game is just pure and simple fun. The story could not be there and I would not complain because it is that fun. What you probably noticed throughout this video is the music. And the game is rich with that whole I just got fucking transported to another dimension and now I have to fight my way out to get back to my world vibe. Which I really dig. When you first set up the game, you are greeted with this fucking banger of a main menu theme. And when you enter the game for the first time, you get this nice and chill vibe, like if you're exploring a new environment, which you are, but it feels good, you know what I mean? And when you enter the dungeon, the music slightly changes depending on what element of the stage you're on. You know when you enter a dungeon, and it's like, then it's like... Okay, great. Boss fights seem cool, music sounds like an orgasm for your ears, but what about me, the player? I hear you say from the comfort of your gaming chair. Well, in the beginning of the game, you start off with typical wizard stuff like fire dragons and a fireball. You know, kind of lame, but whatever. But as you progress and gather gems through the trials, you are able to buy more and more items, such as a fucking shark, a dash that lets you drop a poison bomb on the ground, a basic attack that bounces rubber balls and just so happen to be on fire, a special arcana which is always enchanted and allows the enchanted card to have a special property, like an extra buzzsaw, or make tracer barrage last longer and have more fire Balls. But when your little meter is full, ooh, when that little meter is full, it allows you to combo some shit together and do stuff like this. You can also spend your gems to buy robes, some of which have pros and cons, like this one. You regenerate health, but health is lowered to 100. Or this robe, where evade and critical chances are increased. Gems can also be spent to buy relics, which allow you to do, prevent, and buff certain things to you. And with all of these tools combined, it allows you to have the liberty of creating your own wizard on what you want. As for me, I chose a unicorn. So what about the trials? The trials are challenging, especially starting off, but not to a point where it's range-inducing levels of challenging. There are certain enemies that are unique to each stage, such as a knight that has a shield made out of fire, or an electrified mage that is the most fucking annoying thing to kill. You never know how the map is going to be laid out because of the procedurally generated runes which help keep things fresh, along with every map having their own mini-boss, which must be defeated in order to enter the next stage of the trials. The mini-boss room also acts like a hub, which connects all of the merchant's portals to the mini-boss room. There are three merchants that you can find, two of which are always in the trials, those being the old guy who sells you the head of a horse, and the painter who sells you arcana cards. The last merchant is a random pick of seven, ranging from a cute vampire girl that takes one of your randomly picked arcana cards and gives you an item related to health, a magician who takes a random card of yours and gives you five random enchanted cards to choose from, Death himself, who lets you take a cursed relic that can't be dropped, which all have pros and cons to them, and when grabbing the relic, he gives you this creepy ass laugh. <laughs> An Indiana Jones looking fellow who buys any relic that you don't need for coins. A tailor, when paid 100 coins, will increase the effectiveness of the robe that you are currently wearing by 50%. 
This useless fuck who buys all of your coins for gems, but you need those coins to buy items from the merchants to get stronger so the boss fight is not as stressful, and you can make the argument that he's useful at the end game, but he's never fucking there for some reason. End of pinata. Come here, you fucking pinata. Come on, you fucking pinata. Just fucking pop. You know what? Fuck this. I'm moving on to the next part of the video. Hmm, let me see. Where is it? Ah, there it is. This game really plays with your sense of time, because at the end of the game, what seemed like 10 minutes to you was actually 46 minutes and 34 seconds. And that's the magic of this game. What I said in the beginning of this video is true. This game has a lot of replayability, and I can easily recommend this game to anyone looking for something to kill time with and have fun with, which is why I rate it a 9 out of 10.